I bonked fire. my head. Uh, I love it. That's why the music cut out so suddenly because yes, it was Kelsey a record lost scratch. Consciousness. Yeah. The I bet. <laughs> Confidence, confident bottoms. Welcome to another episode of Confidently Insecure, the podcast where we're absolutely sure we don't, don't know, know ever- everything. <laughs> what? The timing was so off, delayed. Oh, really? <laughs> but here's the thing: what a perfect intro to tell our confidants that for the first time ever, ever of all time in the history books, get them out, write it down. Zachary and I are doing our podcast from different locations yeah i'm on set in bulgaria and (laughs) kelsey is in the third circle of hell also known as a girl's trip (laughs) (laughs) um but don't be alarmed everything else is gonna go off flawlessly no notes about audio or visual this is gonna be just an absolutely classic perfect episode right (laughs) And I'll just let you know now, um, you're unable to rate and review the pod during this episode's release. (laughs) That's been frozen. So even if there is an issue, don't worry about it. You can't really tell us. Yeah, don't Google it. You can't really tell us that we're bad. And would you be have it known that there is no soundboard for this episode? So you're getting a break from your third (gasps) circle of hell, Zachary. I mean, that soundboard... I want you to bring it to my funeral and I want to communicate with you through it because I'm sure my ghost (laughs) will also be fucking up all in that soundboard. I mean, the idea of me, I mean, it's the future. There's AI, there's robots where they're flying, but I just have this soundboard that like flies next to me at all times in case you decide to boop through. I wear headphones. People are trying to talk to me. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Dick, dick, my best dick. friend's trying to contact Don't me Google from it. the future <laughs> and people are like she's gone she's finally done it she's gone absolutely off her rails yeah speaking going off go. the rails this episode could not be more titled at a better time because do you hear me do you see me do you hear and see me i do uh, both i have audio and visual of you <laughs> and you're just congested right <laughs> But look at the bags under my eyes. See, I don't see you like that. I don't see bags. I just see my angel (laughs) friend. That's like, I don't see color. I don't don't see see ugly. I don't see bags. I don't see ugly. I look look like I've been through it. Because y'all, your girl's on a girl's trip right now. I am in Aspen, Colorado on a girl's ski weekend with three hot, smart, fucking fun cute talented friends that i met at breakup boot camp last year and we were like so kikied up that we were like let's go on an actual trip and let me tell you i'm having a fucking blasty blast and this is coming one week directly after a bachelorette trip yeah i was gonna say to 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 loom (laughs) but let me tell you The bachelorette trip to Zulum, who was a friend of the pod, friend of my life, Lord DIY, shout out to our girl. She's getting married so soon. Um, It was very chill. It was almost like a spa weekend in Tulum, like a fun. It was not ratchet turn up. Lauren texted me and actually asked. She didn't ask. She like kind of had a serious sit down with me and was like, do not bring drugs on this trip and do not ask a stripper to come. I'm serious. It'll make other girls feel uncomfortable and it's not that kind of trip. (laughs) Okay. You're the bad influence. You're bringing cigarettes home that you stole from your aunt. You are making the girls try their first drink of alcohol. You are getting everyone in trouble. Wow. Here's the funny part to that. I didn't bring drugs to Tulum. I did bring drugs to this trip and a girl did try a certain drug last night for the first time. <laughs> of us. Oh, did she live? Is she alive? She ha- Here's the thing. She had a fucking blast. She had a Is blast. Is this like a Molly situation? It's a substance and I'm not going to say it. Shut up, Zach. Don't. Shrooms. I hate it when you do this. I hate it when you do well, I'm this. I'm just worried that you're back on meth. Like, I don't want... <laughs> 
I don't want this to spiral. I don't want you to try to buy the mountain or like rearrange trees up there. First of all, Aspen would have the best meth if I was into it meth. It would. I do agree with that. Have you ever been to this ridiculous city? You know what? I think I was there for one night. <gasps> I think it was for a comedy thing. Oh my God. Because like I've ago. never been. And it is it we don't the New York thinks they're rich, LA thinks they're rich, Abu Dhabi thinks they're rich. Bitch, Aspen it's like is all stupid. Rich. Yeah, it's, it's like, like they call you poor as you walk down the street. Yes. They throw snowballs at you. They're oh, like, get cute. out of our town. You're not wearing Louis. You're not wearing Everyone's Montclair. Everyone's kind of like the shop girls on in Pretty Woman. We're like, we don't have yes. anything for you. It's very expensive. Zachary, the way that that happened to us yesterday. <laughs> No, bitch, like, because there's a McDonald's on the outskirts of town <laughs> that you'd be more comfortable in. They're like, you look like Chipotle girls. Um, bitch, the way we went skiing, I, we went. So first of all, we didn't. Okay. Oh my God. I, I had to teach two of the four girls how to ski yesterday. No. So we're, yes, we're exhausted. We're sweating. Our makeup is gone. Our hair is cuckoo. We're in these insane neon jumpsuit ski suits like we look like we on meth. <laughs> i fucking hate you <laughs> i don't do meth for the record in case this ever gets taken out of context when i'm running for president Those puffy eyes say different shut up this is at, this is the altitude um so we look we look insane and we're like let's go to the saint regis hotel oh to a, to après ski in their famous courtyard experience mm. where mm. bitch if you go online it looks like a bunch of rich like fucking trust fund kids spraying like champagne around and i was like yeah let's go that sounds fun we get there we walk up to the the hostess of the like fancy the fun part of the hotel and we're in mind you the outfits that we're in are full ski gear like we don't look normal and we're like hey so what's this part? Like, can we look around? And she's like, no, does the up and down. And she's like, we're only doing tickets and reservations. And I was like, oh, we're not like eating. We just want to look because we might like, you know, want to come tomorrow or something. And she's like, um, and she's like looking at her friend and like the bouncer's like, yeah, they can look in the restaurant. And she like shoots him a look like, <laughs> no, nothing. they'll They're scare poor. People. Yes. And so I was like, oh, yeah, we'll just we're going to pop our heads in and come out. So we pop our heads in around the corner. We come out and she like ignores us. And I, I'm, I'm like, oh, bitch, I'm about to make a meal out of this. So I like stop at the hostess stand and like put my elbow up. And I'm like, <gasps> so that looks really cool. And she, by the way, she's hot in a way that's ugly, you know, yeah. and I'm like, so that looks really cool. So what's the deal with that? And she's like, um, it's the Jade Bar. And I was like, OK, what? Like everything's in there green like making her explain it to me and she's finally like it's two hundred dollars per person to get in so and i was like, like i'll i'll take two tickets for me she'll take yeah two <laughs> and i was just like oh ew so what's outside and she's like um tomorrow it's and she like calls it by its name like it's the snow lodge and i was like well what's the snow lodge and she's like um it's like a big event she's like avoiding telling me what it is i'm like sure. okay so party like drinks like do we need a table she's like oh and she's like shaking her head and like looking at the list like oh it's um like it's it's it's, it's, it's four hundred dollars per person to the tables and stuff and i was like oh is it like music and she's like yeah it's like a dj thing i was like oh i used to date a lot of those and she's like okay and then literally my other two friends are like, fuck this. And they turn around and walk away and like go sit on the couch. And then my other friend who's like the sweet one of the group, like stayed behind and was trying to be nice and stuff. And I was like, she's like, why don't you just go to the link on our website for more info? And I was like, oh yeah, I'll go to Instagram. I'll shoot you guys a DM. I'll for sure shoot you guys a DM. And you're like, and you'll rue the day. 
And I literally like went to their Instagram DM and I was like, hello, we're in town. I, Cause like, of course I have a blue check mark. So I know I can like be red. Right. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, hello, we're in town. We stopped by today and talked to the hostess. And they're like, welcome. How can we help you? And I said, nothing. Your hostess is a cunt. <laughs> <gasps> you didn't. You <laughs> didn't. Yeah, and they haven't replied and they haven't seen it yet. So I'm waiting for their morning social media person to get in and be like, what happened? You know, oh, I'm just trying my... to make my statement in Aspen known. Because okay, you know so... what, my friend, she made such a good point. She was like, that girl's job should be to be like, four fun girls. Yeah, you guys should come by. Like, it's this much. But like, don't worry, I'll make sure you guys get a good time and a good table. Like, that should be a, a hostess job in Aspen. Not yeah. the LA, like, I'm not going to tell you. So it makes you want to come in more. Eh. I can't believe you know? that even I can't believe that even works in Aspen for whatever reason. It feels like a place where money would be kind of just like, yeah, and it's four hundred dollars. Like she doesn't yeah. even mention the money because it's like yeah. you can afford it because you're here. Cause you're at the St. Regis. Anyway, we left. We we then spent the rest of the night bar hopping to five or six bars and had the absolute best time of all times. So this was much more bachelorette party vibes. <laughs> That's what I was going to say is it was so much more bachelorette party vibes. People are making out. Everyone's bi or gay. Like this is a fun group. And I loved my bachelorette party last weekend, but it was very chill. Everyone's engaged. It was in bed by 1130, which I love. I needed that, you know. Yes. But this is like ratchet girls weekend. Especially in What's... like Mexico because you could have gone to jail in Mexico. For I would have. You and know, like, not so much in Aspen. Well, maybe you'll find a way, but I you know, if there's, there's like jail here. There's like American lawyers that could like help, but in Mexico, <laughs> yeah. you'd be like, you know, broke down palace. I feel like in Aspen, they would like put you in a chair in the corner and be like, you need to sit here and give us your phone and think about what you've done. Like, that's their version of jail. Yeah, for sure. Or they maybe like, um, God, they probably like, okay, they would feed you something like Chipotle thinking it was <laughs> like excruciatingly bad. And I just, yeah. like, yum, 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 yum. I'm like, give it to me more. Have yeah. you been on all, like, as a gay man, I feel like bachelor parties for gay men must be so different from straight bachelor parties. But have you been on both? Um, I don't think I've been to either. What? No, I don't like, uh, no, I've never. I've never been heavily involved in a gay's wedding and <laughs> I, um, I don't know most, why that sounds so funny. <laughs> honestly, the most exposure I've gotten to bachelor and bachelorette parties is going to places like Nashville for work and being like absolutely disgusted by everything I see. <laughs> Your heterosexual, celebration, <laughs> heterosexual celebration of, of getting married is nauseating to me personally. And don't you think in West Hollywood, like at the Abbey, the famous, the most famous gay bar in the world, it's every weekend is a bachelorette party and the gays are always like, get out of our space. Yeah. It's very interesting because we of course love women. We actually love yeah. women more than other gay men, but yes, that's true. And we, I think would embrace bachelorette parties, except oftentimes girls enter our space and treat it as kind of like the mud room, like of, you know, like they <laughs> Let just me like, take my shoes off. <laughs> yeah. They just kind of like stand, like get on, they're in the way they're loud. They're just like, you know, they make very, you hold their coat. <laughs> they're very you in Aspen. Do you know what I mean? Like Aspen is gay and you are bachelorette party. Okay, to be fair, that was a very accurate <laughs> metaphor. I wasn't sure where you were going. It felt homophobic of me, but it felt like by erasure, but I loved it because it's so accurate. Like, I feel like the dirty, twangy, like... Yeah, we're like, um, hi, you know, but like, and then it's like a four foot two girl who can't walk in heels <laughs> knocking my drink over. I'm like, bitch, get out, of, out here. of here but here's here's the balance right and this is the same it goes for the same metaphor you just made about me being an aspen you guys need straight girls in your bars because we have a riotous time it's the balance of not getting sloppy yes 
but like we're get we're making everyone get on tables and we're like showing our tits and we think oh, it's no. so funny and this is what I think I girls I do we do love a female presence like yes be, be it drag queens or or biological <laughs> women or whatever um or whatever uh, or whatever you call yourselves. Uh, yeah, we love it. It's just like, and that's just, you're saying it, that, that's the balance of life. It's like, yeah, come in and make the, make the space fun, but don't be annoying. Like don't bring you your gotta, meth. You, yes. Yes. You just got to know, mm. you just got to toe the line a little bit, but mm. I think it's because we really can't do that to y'all. I don't think gay guys could like, be like, all come in, like a group of gay guys come into a straight bar and be like the most annoying thing dare i say the version of that for me as a woman is getting glam done i get like four very gay catty obsessed with themselves beautiful men barking at me for like an hour and a half and I'm strapped to a chair so I can't do anything and it's like one's poking me in the eye and then another one's pulling my hair and they're yelling at each other because they each fucked the same guy like that's my version of that are they good at what they do fair enough they I are. just want to know I just uh, maybe, maybe they're not but no like, they are always if they were like clumsily like Oh, girl, you need to get your tits in a blah, blah, blah. And they don't really know anything about tits or something that would. But I do agree that you were in some way uh, molested in that situation. <laughs> and we're demonetized. Um, I love that um, you've never been to a bachelor or bachelor party, though, because that just surprises the shit out of me, but is so on track for you because you don't fucking like anyone. Like you're don't, you're not trying to go out. You want everyone away from you. I feel like if even a close friend invited you to one, you'd be like, oh, I have a show that weekend in Indiana or something just to like lie oh. to get out of it. Oh, okay. You're, said, my bachelorette all, party is the only one you're ever coming to. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I love that you just, you painted me out to be an absolute hermit crab of a person just now i mean I, i'm this is the thing like okay like yes i love hanging out with myself and i love <laughs> like a controlled environment i guess but like if it's a good like yes i'll go to your wedding or weddings or whatever polycule you make a commitment <laughs> like thing to our commitment ceremony <laughs> <laughs> under a full moon in the desert yeah but like yeah to be fair uh like last night i had the option of going to like this like this like big kind of like show this like queer show downtown la or go to bob's house and just watch drag race with three other friends yeah. and i went hard there's no question the, no i was yeah. like don't want to drive downtown don't want to be around don't want to be pushed and shoved by people yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe I am angry and mean. But that's okay. No, wait, hold on. That is not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit of projection jumping out on from your soul. But because um, I guess I hear like bah humbug when I describe when I No, oh the my God. Au contraire, quite the opposite. I'm hearing adult Mm. love your routine comfy mm. in their own skin don't mm. need to be on a bar showing your tits kind of guy facts honey um before we go into how fun and all the chaos we have about bachelor and bachelorette parties um i have a dating no filter update from my sister great it's very exciting we've oh, been following exciting. her maybe approaching a human being this is the saga that continues who is not a user of narcotics to our knowledge correct to our knowledge and here's the thing i like about this saga it made me realize last night that i you and i are not normal like we will approach someone we don't give a shit we'll be like hey i like your shirt you want to make out that is probably not 99 percent of our listeners way of doing things i do this podcast to try and encourage people to be more like that but more i think my you. sister bring yeah more so i think my sister brings a real american take of what flirty dumb and like crushes feels like okay. so it's a slow burn but here's the update as we know oh, my sister good. has a gym crush she 
was far enough to, away to see he didn't have a wedding ring on. She maybe had seen him at a narcotic, Narcotics Anonymous meeting. Turned out it wasn't him. She goes back to the gym. Mm -hmm. She sees him. She gets into the gym and she's like, oh my God, he's at the squat racks. How funny. I need to do my squat racks. So she goes, walks over to the squat racks and the one directly next to him is open. You'd think me and you were going yeah. to the one directly next to him. Yeah. My sister, gorgeous God lover, Megan Dara, goes like two down from him. And I'm like, you fucking idiot. You but she bitch. thinks that's she thinks that's exciting. She's she like, I'm too. She thinks that's a move. So she's doing a squat and she's like, he is lifting like a Hemsworth. Like he is like lifting. And she's like, that's my in. So she like goes over like, you know, she's walking around pretending like she's got to go get a towel or some shit. And she like goes over and she's like, excuse me. And this is what I love. This is a universally worked line. You go, this is, sorry, this is going to be a weird question, which immediately gets my attention. Yep. Like if someone comes yep. up to me and is like, what? A weird question? Weird. Go okay. on. Yeah. Any I'm regular sure folk is going to be like leaning in. Yeah. And she goes, do you do CrossFit by chance? And he's like, oh, no, I don't. But I get asked that all the time. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm just watching the way you're doing your RDLs and your HGPs and your ding dong bangs and your barbell boobs. Oh, I just thought you did. Bangs. Yeah, that was a little ad living by me. But um, I thought maybe you did that. And he was like, oh, ha, ha, no, I um, I do my own program. You know, I came up with my own thing and, you know, da, da, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, An oh, inventor okay. is what I'm hearing. <laughs> He, Sorry, I, I'm hearing entrepreneur. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, and she goes, "Oh, okay. My name's Megan, by the way." And then he Megan, says, "His." I'm proud of you. That's that's all it step. takes. That's just, just all, all it takes. It... She's in now. Uh, even on dating, she's apps, in his brain. Like with Grinder, it'll be like if there's like a lull, I just int I introduce myself. I'm like, "Oh, I'm yeah. Zach, by the way." And it really yeah. just like it gets the balls rolling it makes it hands. real yes <laughs> like those fucking stress yeah, balls stress balls yeah okay, um sorry. And, and so he goes he says his name back which i'm not gonna lie i absolutely don't remember but she told me he kind of looks like a hotter version of john cena so from this day forth we shall be calling him john cena like okay, the okay. wrestler sure. so he's like oh hi I, my wait, name's wait, john wait. john cena who's been an actor now for like 15 years is john yes. Cena the wrestler to you Zachary what no this is the intersection of this is your gay showing that no. man that's like trying to say the rock is I mean okay the rock is the only one who's transitioned from wrestler to actor he's the only one John Cena has not transferred from wrestler to actor and I will die on that hill you are so out of your depth I'm basically oh the God. hostess in Aspen right now and you cannot sit at <laughs> our table john cena has been in so many movies i cannot you see you don't even know because you're not a movie person i but... first of all i literally host a movies <laughs> podcast so fuck you this is why i want you to pose i want you to ask garrick and zach zach too oh okay if yeah if they consider john cena more of a wrestler or an actor th today i'm gonna i'm gonna do you guys when referring to John Cena, do you assume actor or wrestler need this info now ASAP? It's 834 in Los Angeles, California. I don't picture either well, of them or like morning girls. Garrick is up. They actually they're both up talking about Dune theories. And that's where I just mute the I just mute the I just mute Are the, you not the a cast. Dune? A Dune boom? No, I saw it. I loved it. I saw on your calendar you're going to see it today. <laughs> Have I shared all of my calendar with you? <laughs> I just discovered this last night. <laughs> Wait, that's unhinged and I hate it. Although Wait, kind of, I love it. You can of, have all of mine. It's kind of I don't want it. Um, it's kind <laughs> of good though because you can like learn time zones and like figure out. Oh my out god, based drag on me when I'm <laughs> Zach. Zach, okay, Zach's bringing our, our dirty laundry out into the open. Let's just do it. I'm an idiot. I don't know how time. Oh, wow. They both responded already. Oh. Zach said actor, but I guess now I'm hearing his wrestler intro in my head. Okay. 
but actor. That's is the both. Answer. Yeah, mm. that's interesting. I think Garrick's gonna go wrestler. He's just we're same wavelength. Um, okay, I think we should throw it to a break and come back and let's talk about the fun that is Bachelor Party. Okay. Hey, yes, and we're back. Let's do it, Zach. I tasked you with finding the history of bachelor, bachelorette parties. Why do we do them? Why do they exist? Why? Why have they changed into being such a chaotic event, chaos in our lives? Well, like most things, they are uh, they're a pagan ritual in which Shut the, the fuck penis up. of the best friend was cut off and um are you fucking with me yeah um oh my god Uh, a bachelor party in the united states and canada also known as a stag weekend or stag or yeah and hen if it's a girl kelsey this is my part of the (laughs) podcast (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry go 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 Uh, or a bucks night in australia is held is a party held or arranged by the man who is shortly to enter marriage. Traditionally, stag nights involve a black tie banquet hosted by the father of the groom that included a toast what? in honor of the groom and bride. Since the 1980s, some bachelor parties in the United States have involved vacation to foreign destinations or have featured female companies such as strippers, topless, or topless waitresses. So it was it used to be kind of like a regal a thing. Fancy. I'm getting like Titanic chandeliers cigars on boats everyone's night. drowned by the end yes yeah um so but then it turned kind of debaucherous and what i'm hearing in this research is with the introduction of cocaine people like absolutely uh- could not go to black tie events anymore they had to like kill strippers um and call what? it like fun i mean they're I just it turned into a debaucherous thing basically um the bachelor party dates back as early as the fifth century bc the ancient what? Spartans celebrated the groom's last night as a single man in which they held a dinner and made toasts on his behalf. Are you kidding? Oh, you know those Spartans were also fucking the side goddesses. And each other. It was not. Oh, for sure. Oh, my I'm God, almost dude. pretty positive that Spartans are the ones who thought it was honorable to, to like, love or have sex with other <laughs> Spartans. Oh, I, I, is where we would hit that button, but, but it's not here, but I agree. It's it's like that whole, it it used to be kind of like, oh, I'm fighting in his honor to like, I fight for this man's load, you know? Oh, daddy. I'm so here for it. Um, the term bachelor originally meaning a young knight in training was first mentioned in the 14th century to refer to an unmarried man. Um, in 1922, the term bachelor party was published in William Chambers' Journal of Literature, Science, and Arts and was described as a jolly old party. Oh, so it quickly changed. It went from trying to just get a bunch of men in the room to be classy to, like, they're incapable of doing that. And so now it's riotous. Yeah, like the 1900s. I don't know what happened. Maybe champagne was invented or something. Yeah. Um, and they were like, let's get drunk. And so, no, alcohol has been around forever. Okay. Um, in Canada, some choose and said to hold a stag and doe or a hag party or hag do <laughs> in the UK. No. Hag being a combination of the words hen, as Kelsey mentioned earlier, and stag, <laughs> in which both the bride and groom attend. These events may often provide an opportunity to fundraise for the wedding itself. Did you know that? That like no. stag and hen parties can be used as fundraisers for the wedding? Shut up. That's so fun. Yeah. Um, before it's used as a term for a pre-wedding party, hen party was used in the United States as a general term for an all-female gathering, usually held oh. at one girl's residence. In 1897, the Deseret News noted that a hen party was a time-honored idea that tea and chit-chats, gossip, smart hats, uh, constitute the necessary adjuncts to these particular gatherings. So it was like a... A kind of like a, 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 a ladies who lunch thing. Yeah. Yeah. Going out um, for tea. The practice of giving a party to honor the bride to be goes back for centuries. However, certain American bachelorette party customs involving licentiousness among some social groups may have begun during the sexual revolution of the 1960s. <gasps> oh I really my love God. That. So Women's like History straws. Month. Yes, I literally like, have a penis straw in my backpack right now. <laughs> I know you do. Um, <laughs> 
it was uncommon until at least the mid 1980s. And the first book on planning bachelorette parties was published only in 1998. So like bachelorette wow. parties, as we know them have kind of been since the sixties was the soft launch and the eighties again was like the hard launch. Which isn't that just like feminism in a hist American history? Like we were like free love, like men finally gave us rights. And then it was like yeah. cocaine in the 80s. I think yeah. you're right. I think it literally might have been cocaine that did all of this. I mean, cocaine has been like the responsible for like the fucking stock bro stock I mean, markets. I think about all the plans <laughs> I made and the things I did while heavily cocaine. And, you know, while you were starting businesses, good, yes, yes, honey, ideas, I suck four dicks a minute. Ooh, amazing. They were hard on Coke. Well, I didn't say they were doing Coke, but I was. <laughs> oh, good point. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Well, yeah, I love that. We did that brief history. Okay. Fucking that was actually I actually did learn something. You say you don't want this to be an educational podcast. I, I loved that. I stand okay. by that. Um, okay, so I, being a professional bachelorette goer, uh, decided to make my own little list of bachelorette party do's and don'ts. Oh, I can't because wait. I was scrolling along to uh, the TikTok. So this would be our TikTok taught me section. And I came across some drama where a girl was getting dragged to fucking hell because she made a post about her. Like she was like alone in a bathtub, like looking like sorrowsome. And she had recorded it and wrote like did sad music in the background yeah. and basically was like, so mourn it this is literally the language she used she was like mourning what should have been my bachelorette party in paris with my best friends but none of them could afford it and now i canceled the trip and she's like and then she added in the caption being something like Br brides to be have feelings too thank you for validating how i feel and people lost their minds being like what excuse That's so gross and so then it had me thinking like oh my god when did bachelorette parties and i think it's the rise of social media being the answer when did bachelorette parties go from being a night out at the bar with right. your friends right. go to a country western ride a bull get fucking drunk throw up go home to these elaborate week-long excursions in paris with 16 fucking itinerary to do's right that's going to put everyone in the hole like twenty seven hundred dollars minimum not to mention you're also going to a bridal shower if you're in the bridal party you're paying for dresses and accessories you're also taking time off like you're buying gifts for the wedding like that's like five g's when you add in a destination trip so to the you, pot do you wince a little bit when one of your friends invites you to be a part of this crew I, I, it depends on the friendship. Like, it's very easy to be like, oh, I'm out of town that weekend, which is true. Like a lot of times I'm traveling. So it's easy to be like, oh, I'm going out of town. But then for like Lauren's bachelorette, right? Like she's one of my closest friends. I knew that it would cost a little bit. I could have said no. I very easily could have said no. But like for me, I was willing to take on the budget of traveling and um some like excursion stuff because i knew she was very generously covering so much of the other things like meals and different party things and um like little treats she got like us amazing gift bags and things like that so it was a i have i have to balance it out in my head to be like what's worth it and what's not so that's why i created kelsey's bachelorette parties do and don'ts so here are my do's Okay. Do make a theme. It is great for pictures and your bride will love it. So if you're part of the bachelorette party, check in with your bride, see if she wants to plan things or if she wants you guys to take the reins and encourage her to do some sort of theme, whether it's a night themed or like if the trip is themed, like, or like citizens of bikini bottom. Where did you come up with that? <laughs> I guess when he said theme, I was like, 
hmm, like SpongeBob. And then I was like, well, who would it? I don't know. I think that would be really funny. (laughs) (laughs) So like a tropical getaway bachelorette party and you're all doing different citizens of Bikini Bottom themes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It would make for a great fucking TikTok. Oh, and it would get pictures. That's what the other thing you said. I was like, it would be cute pictures if there was like Sandy the squirrel and like, you know. Someone dressed as Squidward, your ugliest friend. Yes. Dead. Um, okay, another do. Do surprise your bride. And I said, to an extent, know your audience, right? Yes. Like, we knew Lauren did not want strippers. She would rather die. But we knew she would love to be surprised in some way. Like she's very much type A, wants to control the whole thing. So we were like, oh, let's get like a couple of fun little funsies things. So like if you're part of the party, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be thoughtful. Definitely surprise your bride because she probably is like freaking out planning for a wedding and all the other things. Like put some shrooms in her food. (laughs) This isn't the hangover, Zachary. Yeah. Don't drug your friends. Because you're a stick in the mud. Because I'm a no, sober no stick in the mud. No one's ever been upset by putting getting a little shrooms in their stuff. No one. Okay. It's physically impossible. Okay. Just just a little bit. Put that and on that, record. That's an endorsement from the pod. Okay, great. Um, this is going to be a controversial <laughs> one. I said do get wasted, and I think you should be allowed. Someone in the group, preferably the bride, but someone in the group should be allowed to puke and or pee on one rogue thing so whether it's like someone pees outside of a club in a bush yeah the zachary (laughs) i don't know if there's like a dog at the airbnb you can throw up on the dog don't throw up on the dog but like throw up somewhere funny because you're drunk also film it Mm, oh that was called oh my god (laughs) That that was one of mine actually was like before posting check with the group like it's one thing to post like a cute like we're all at dinner but it's another thing to like post your friend giving a stripper head and like you know without her consent um you have something to say about that <laughs> I, have, I have a pitch okay or because now I'm fusing in the whole like there used to be fundraisers at these things so what if a bachelorette party of like kind of like pro sex girlies started a t- like a weekend only fans and then like oh. launched it and then like it's like a girls gone wild only fans and they use all the money that comes in for the wedding i love that except i'd want to keep the money for myself like the bride can have her split that says more about you kelsey yeah i am that person no, I um okay you, uh, I said, give your friends some treats, even if it's like your BFF and your maid of honor. Like if you're the bride, give us some treats. We oh, do like a need a bag. Yeah, we need some treats, especially if it's a night out or a destination wedding. We need something to be like, just get this party started, whether it's like neon bracelets or like just give us something oh. that makes us feel like a little gang. So when we're out, we can be like, oh, there's our cowboy hat group, you know? Oh, yes. um, I did also say, um, if you can't go to the bachelorette party because of like financials or whatever, you're busy and it is a good friend. That's the bride. I would say, tell them you are going to contribute by like surprising your friend with something while she's there. So maybe you like pay for one of her dinners. Yeah. Cookie delivery, get her a massage to the room. Like, I think that's a fun alternative to be like there and included. That is how I see myself represented in this thing you're doing i would absolutely send an uber eats love to send you pizza at the end of the night oh perfect that's perfect left alone yes not around people okay now here is my don'ts so don't this is if you're the bride don't make your friends go too hard like plan this trip with different paces like not all of your friends party the way you do some of them are moms some of them are night like morning people like i've seen itineraries where it's like we're going day drinking then we're immediately going to dinner you have 16 minutes to shower and get ready for the club and then we're gonna go to another club and it's like bitch no if you're gonna plan a fucking trip schedule downtime and let everybody do what they want to do kind of thing too yeah Especially me. Um, 
Yes. Especially you just don't invite him. Um, don't put your friends in a position of having to hold a giant secret that happens at this bachelorette party. <laughs> like if you're going to fucking cheat on your boyfriend or your fiance, whether you're a Do bachelorette party member quietly. or the bride out of sight of everybody else, because I would be so fucking pissed if I had to hold a secret like that for these bitches. I, I want to go on record and say, I won't hold a secret for anyone. Oh, you'll stand up at the wedding and say it. No, but no, no, no. That's very different. Oh, when asked, I will tell the truth. You're getting demoted from my friends list and that's on honesty. Well, no, I mean, I'll lie to one of your like fuck boys, but like, I assume if the person you're getting, you're getting married to, I'll be close with as well. And, and so if they, he's like, they pull you aside and they're like, Zach, I, I just don't believe Kelsey. Feeling. I have a weird feeling. Yeah. You're fucking I, ratting me out. So I would probably go to you first and be like, listen, no, you can't go to me first. You, don't you can't go to me this. first. He he pins you in a corner Ooh, at like a, a restaurant. Yeah, Are and he's listening? like, Zach, tell I'm me, pinned. did I'm anything pinned. happen? And you you can't see me. You can't like, what are you doing in that moment? Are you saying, I don't know. I got to talk to Kelsey first because that's a dead giveaway. Um, I'd be like, first of all, either grab me harder or let me go. <laughs> um, <laughs> either fucking kiss me or get out of my way. No, I mean, you're making it sound like I'm the bad guy, but you're the slut. You're the bad you're, guy. You're the yeah. lying slut. And so. Yeah, but you're the fucking rat. I just went. You're the traitor. Show. Okay, it's like, this is the thing. It would, I think, be kind of like the beginning of the end of us being super close. <gasps> Before my fucking wedding, where you're yeah. obviously my man of honor. Yes, and I am just being honest. So your hostility is noted. Um, but it's just like, okay, I would play in my head like, okay, so Kelsey can lie to the person she loves the most about something that would like really change the game. Why won't she'll probably do that? What if, okay, me. new, 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 new information, new data in this fake scenario. I tell you, I'm going to tell them. I will okay, tell yes, them just after the wedding, after yeah, the wedding. Totally good. I don't give a fuck about so weddings. That, I like marriage. The okay. marriage part is not really the thing of it to me. It's like if I had to hang out with a guy via you or a girl or a they via you often and like have a genuine relationship with this, this person, big secret. I'd be like, the, every time I hung out, I'd be like, I I'm guess I would get, get numb to it eventually. I'm going to say it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hold it in anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of insane situations, um, let's just get through a couple of these. Um, writer wrote written in from you, our confidants, about your craziest bachelor and bachelorette stories. And I am going to read just my favorites since we're almost out of time. Okay. <clears throat> I will be keeping everyone anonymous for obvious reasons. <laughs> we went to a friend's bachelorette or bachelor party. Local cop buddy hired a stripper. Long story short, got a lap dance from my ex-girlfriend's mom. Didn't realize it was her till later because so out of context, I had never seen her naked in all of her stripper makeup, costume, glory with wigs on and things. So a guy goes to a bachelor party, gets a dance from a stripper, realizes after it's too late that it was his ex-girlfriend's mother who he didn't know was a stripper. I I'm trying to think of what the age ages are here, but I guess it could have been like a 20 year old guy and like a. 40 year old yeah 40 year old hot girl. milf That's stripper so why well, now i want to know if he like what actually happened with her like do you think he penetrated the mom 
did you think he told his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, or do you think his best friend Zach outed him to his ex-girlfriend and said, I can't keep this secret. You, you got your boy ex-boyfriend got a stripper. Dude. First of all, it's all in the, all in the words. I'm joking. Ex. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But next I story. Yeah. Okay. Um, confirmed. This one, I, I literally peed my pants. Stripper shows up with face mask dildos, you know, where your mouth would be. So like they put the stripper would put on a mask and it's got a dildo like where the mouth is. Right. Okay. We've all seen those in like kinky BDSM porn. It's kind of like a leather mask and it just has like a giant pink dildo out of the mask. Um, God bless you. uh, We've all seen those in porn. Yeah. You all know it. It's not in my porn. (laughs) (laughs) So gets a guy get, gets a couple of us to fuck around with it you know like pretend to suck it okay. like oh uh, we're jerking it off he 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 then stripper gets down on the floor and is like somebody sit on it so like one of the girls sit on it so one of our girlfriends at the bachelorette party squats on his face and starts bouncing up and down right like fucking it i th- either pretending to fucking fuck it or fucking it she might have had like her skirt on or something and was just being like hee 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 well she finally got off of him and he's unconscious <laughs> <laughs> apparently the bouncing and hitting his head on the ground gave him a concussion and we had to call an ambulance and he had to go to the hospital <laughs> that is so funny what makes me piss my pants is the imagining the moment of her getting up the music still blasting everyone's like hey yes girl who's next and they're like wait is it stacy turn down the music turn it no oh my god i'm not turn it off turn he's he's not moving he's not moving (laughs) take the mask off he can't breathe he's not like that fucking like write that into the next movie just i don't care a rogue scene just do That's it so funny oh my god okay um da, 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 da. oh this one made me like oh this one made me like a oh no so b- bachelor party bride gets wasted spends a few hours puking outside of the bar into a bucket until we all realize she's not going to stop and looks really ill, like scary. We decided to call an ambulance and she left in an ambulance and we all rode back to her house in the limo in complete silence. (laughs) What happened to her? Did she die? I assume she's fine, but again, the moment of them riding back and about like covered in glitter and boa feathers, just like, do you think she's got? What are we gonna tell her husband? Zach's in the corner, like I'm calling him right now. Oh, I already sent a video. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, last one. This will end on a real. Ooh. Um. My friends and I went to a particularly dirty strip club for one, but the one guy that was, uh, one guy, one of our friends was not really into it. He was standing on the sidelines, avoiding the girls. And when one comes up to him asking why he isn't getting any dances, he responds that he's just, isn't that interested. She says, but I'm so wet for you. And he says, prove it. She reaches down and touches herself and flicks the proof into this guy's face it proved her point because he needed to go to the bathroom to wash his face off that night ended without any further craziness but a few weeks later this guy has a really bad itching eye goes to the doctor yep eye herpes (laughs) now here's my thing I think this guy rode in trying to save his buddy's ass a little bit because I think this guy got a little bit too into it and like let this stripper grind on him and like get her pussy all in his face. Because I'm trying to imagine a world where a little bit of flickety fluid gives you eye herpes. But I bet you she fucking rode this dude's face and to cover up and like to cover for him 
they're all telling his girlfriend, no, dude, he didn't even want it. He was standing in the corner and she just came up to him and flicked some pussy juice on his eye. I, okay, fuck. Because I really didn't, it seems like almost too, like, I don't know, like, it, it doesn't seem like a made up story for whatever reason. But it, it, you can't make that up. I don't know, pussy juices, like, are, is there enough to flick? Oh, sometimes you could certainly, I'm sure, flick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to believe women this time. <laughs> oh my God. It's my first time believing women. And, oh my uh, God. Mark it. Uh, mark it. And that he did get his face, um, rid, rid, ridden. Road. Road. Road hard and put away wet and itchy. Oh, and itchy. And now he probably has to take medication for the rest of his life or eye drops. But hey, you know what? That's bachelor and bachelorette parties, baby. What a story. Um, That's our episode. Honestly, this went a lot smoother over um, online being in two different places than I thought. I had a good time. Did you come? Um, I'm close. I have a chub. Okay. Do you have anything to promote? Yes. May 2nd at Dynasty Typewriter in Los Angeles, California. I'm doing my show after hours live, which Kelsey has been to both so far. She's and MVP. when I tell you they're only getting better. And I told you this over text, like quickly, cause I was running to the airport. But when I say it like that show the other night was so fucking funny. Like me and the athlete are still quoting bits from it. It was oh so God. funny. I, it was I good. Agree. Yeah. I'm, it I, was a late it's... night show, but it was like, I was rejuvenated after it. That's such a good, such a nice review. Thank you. It's true. So like if you're in LA, I seriously think you guys should come because it made me laugh. My face hurt. And I'm a little pissed about that because you know, I have chronic pain. So I, yeah. I would rather you not make me laugh that way, I'm but Hey, pain daddy. Um, okay. I don't, uh, we have some day passes left and some spots at don't panic retreat.com. Y'all need to come. It's going to be a riot. Other than that, all I can say is stay safe. Don't, don't do the things I say to do. Do do the things I say to don't. Go have a bachelorette party and go have a girls weekend. Go to Aspen. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and we'll what see you next week. Off. Bye. Love you. Bye.